Hello, this is Dr. Bob and Debbie DiMaria. Welcome once again to another very exciting half hour health programs. I promise you, you'll be glad you joined us tonight. Wow, there is so much to talk about. Um, any time of the year, some of you are contending with this stress. Stress, it just totally wipes out your immune system. I read different research, and I'm sure that some of you maybe have seen this yourself. Up to 80% of all hospitalizations, Deb, directly related to stress. There's a couple of things that stress does to the body. One of them is it'll cause your pH, that's the measure of acid and alkaline, in your body to be more acid. Our, we have to consume food to make our body more alkaline, but in our environment, just our day-to-day -day activity, our bodies tend to be acid. You say, well, Dr. Bob, who cares? I know sometimes you want to think, so who cares? Well, I care because, see, when I have patients that come in and that are acid, they have a greater chance to have muscle cramps. They have potential to have osteoporosis. They'll have cold sores. They lack calcium. Why? Because when you're acid, your body will take minerals from bone to help neutralize the acid. And here's something I'll share with you, Deb, is that acid causes bile to become thick because bile is also alkaline. Bile comes from your liver, and I want you to think of bile as your dish detergent in your body to help metabolize fat. So Deb, you know when you really think about stress, because people talk about stress right now in the world, and there's lots of stuff going on. You know, we are so close, and as people talk about, Jesus said, with wars and rumors of wars. Well, I mean, we have so much happening right now in the world. We do, and so people are what I hate to say this, but stressed out. And it's, it's really prevalent in my life because what happened to me one time is my adrenal glands, and we didn't almost realize this back then, so this was 20 years ago, let's say, but I had some stressful situations, one on top of the other one. And then we did some traveling, and while we were traveling, my low back went totally out. So I'm in a foreign country and I can't move. I'm like paralyzed. I can't do anything. And basically, I know I'm going to let Dr. Bob explain a lot of that, but it was because of my adrenal glands. It was because of the stress factor. I know someone that was in a certain amount of stress previous to then a parent dying. So there was stress happening, mounting up, a parent died, and it was their um, spine totally went out. And at that point, they ended up having surgery. I know that there's people that come into the office that say, I wasn't doing anything, but I was taking a shower, or I was just bending over, or I was lifting my child, and my back went out. And we never related to the things going on in our body. And that is how we handle stress. Dr. Bob, you've got to tell us the reasoning. Well, you know, Deb, I'm thinking about all the people that come into the office. It's almost like on a regular basis, especially around a holiday time, whether it be Fourth of July or Mother's Day or Easter, St. Patrick's Day, the Christmas holidays, when they consume more sugar. See, unique about our patients, they make this wise choice to eliminate sugar from their lives. And they might have a cookie or two. That's like saying to an alcoholic to have a drink or two and it sets them off. Now, Debbie alluded to the fact there's a gland called the adrenal gland. There are a pair of adrenal glands. There are two of them, one located on top of each kidney. They're about the size of a walnut. Now, the adrenal glands have many functions, but we'll talk about three, let's say four of them right now. If I yelled out, fire, fire, your adrenal gland would start secreting adrenaline and you would just hightail it out of there. One function. That's the inner part of the adrenal gland. Now, the adrenal gland also controls the um, 
hormones that have everything to do with sugar metabolism. They're called glucocorticoids. Ligament strength, which Debbie alluded to, back going out easy, mineral corticoids, and another hormone group called androgens. Androgens are your sex hormones. When you eat sugar, and you eat sugar, a lot of sugar, but if you've been really watching and you have sugar, um, your body is not going to be able to make the hormones to make the ligaments strong. So when somebody comes in the office and says, you know what, Dr. Bob, I don't know what I was doing. I went over to tie my shoe and my back went out. I know they had their handy in, hand in the cookie jar, Deb. These same individuals are people who ha where bright light might bother their eyes. They can get dizzy from a sit to a stand position. They crave salt and they crave sugar. So, Debbie, these individuals, their ligaments are lax and their spine subluxates. Mm. Then causing that to go out. So what happened to you right. was just that. So you can eat, and let's just clarify this a little bit more. So you can eat sweets, which really will stress your adrenal glands, but at the same time, stress affects your adrenal glands. See? We've been blessed. We've written several books, and one of the books we talk about cholesterol. And said, Dr. Bob, what does cholesterol have to do with stress? Just listen to this great story. The adrenal glands need cortisone. They make cortisone. Cortisone's a natural pain reliever, pain killer. Takes away inflammation in the body. The cortisone, our cortisol, has a lot to do with that fueling the body to get out of the area really quickly. But in our world today, people are always hearing fire, fire, fire. You can see what does that mean, Dr. Bob? They're always having this low level stress go on in their body. So their adrenal glands are exhausted. They can't make cortisone anymore. Cortisone is a steroid. So then what the adrenal glands are gonna say is they're gonna say brain brain says, what, adrenal glands? I need more cortisone. So what does the brain do? The brain does not make cortisone. The brain makes cholesterol. Hear what I just said? The brain makes cholesterol, which becomes another hormone called pregnenolone, which becomes another hormone, ladies, called progesterone, which balances estrogen. As a side note, if you have tender breast, heavy menstrual flow, cold hands and cold feet, it could be because the stress, your body will take that progesterone and use it to make more cortisone. So I'll have somebody come into the office and their cholesterol is high. They'll go to their conventional prescribing medical physician who will give them a prescription to lower their cholesterol because their cholesterol is high because they're under stress. Dr. Bob, you know what? And we see that cycle all oh, the time. Every day. And it's not, it's, cholesterol is one of the leading items we see. People come in and say, I have high cholesterol. And instead of thinking, they start thinking about the diet that they need to follow. And that's not always a bad thing. But what they don't consider is the stress they're under. Dr. Bob, I have to right now, just because of our female hormone book, talk about something that I had someone talk to me about yesterday. <coughs> they went on a vacation. Previous to the vacation, her and I, I have been working with her about her hot flashes. And as we talked and kept discussing some of the natural things that she has been doing to eliminate the hot flashes, I kept putting in, you're under stress. It's your adrenal glands. Your adrenal glands are stressed out, and that's why you're having hot flashes. So she and I were talking yesterday. She returned from vacation. She looked at me, and she said, I want you to know something. And I said, what was that? And she said, while I was gone on vacation, I did not have one hot flash. And when I got back into my own environment, to everything that's a day-to-day, -day, that what you have to do financially, what you have to do for your family, all the commitments that you have to make, she said, my hot flashes returned. Your adrenal glands really function with your hot flashes. So are you stressed? 
Are those adrenals burned out? Are they causing your hot flashes? Well, for one, I want to tell you that our female hormone book is number one on Amazon. And I would suggest to go to Amazon and buy the female hormone book. The reason is I have never had a book in my life that so many people have said to us. And I have heard from sources that you're talking about me. This book is written in a language I understand and it seems like you've been in my house. So Dr. Bob, I give us some of the physiology there behind the hot flashes and the adrenal glands. Well, you know, Deb, men don't understand hot flashes. Men, and Debbie and I have been married since 1976. You do the math. So because we've been married, I've learned about a lot of female hormone I don't want to say issues, but what's been a really a blessing for Debbie because we work together, she really does not experience what these other people do on a consistent, regular basis. So I don't, Debbie's not doing this all the time. Like I, you'll be someplace that I see people waving their hand and they're hot, but I'll have women that'll come into the office. So we see three or four reasons that they have hot flashes. Debbie just shared one with the adrenal gland. Now listen, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share some physiology that very few people know. We're going to keep it under our hats. The adrenal gland is the fuel pump to your body. What does that mean? So if you're under stress, the adrenal gland says, okay, let's get some fuel, let's get some fuel. But what you don't realize is the thyroid's the gas pedal. You know what I just said? Adrenal's the fuel pump, thyroid is a gas pedal. So when you're underneath this consistent, terrible stress, your thyroid gets exhausted also. Do you know that 72% of the people in the world, right now as I speak, have low iodine with the potential to have low thyroid? I have found from our experience, we talk about this in the hormone book, that when your thyroid is not functioning, you have a greater chance to have hot flashes. So we have the ability right now that you could go to our website and we can do what we call a urine iodine loading test. We can determine exactly how much iodine you have inside of your body. And with that, we can create a plan. Now, the next segment, we're going to talk about sex hormones. We're going to talk about the adrenal glands. But we're going to talk about how you can check your male and your female hormones because men, guess what I'm learning? Most men over 40 years old today have low testosterone. We're going to take a short break and be right back. Hello, this is Dr. Bob and Debbie DiMaria. Welcome once again to our Half Off Health program. Let me finish up with the reasons for hot flashes. Number one, stress which then affects the thyroid gland, number two, lack of oil, number three. Why does your body need oil? Because oil is used for all hormonal reactions inside of your body. So if you're having hot flashes right now, I'd encourage you to take at least one tablespoon of flax oil per day per 100 pounds. If you have cold hands and cold feet, you may want to think about having a thyroid assessment we talk about this in great detail in Dr. Bob's Drugless Guide to Balancing Female Hormones. Very significant that we can do some testing to these areas. Now, before the break, I mentioned to you that we're going to talk briefly about sex hormones. At the beginning of the program, I said to you that the adrenal glands make mineral corticoids. That's why we talk so much about your low back going out. They also make glucocorticoids. That's why I have the sugar up here. See, when you eat sugar, sugar affects the adrenals, which also can cause inflammation in the body because you don't have enough natural cortisone to take away the inflammation, and your back can go out easy. But what Debbie and I also have known, and one of the reasons that we wrote Dr. Bob and Debbie's Guide to Sex and Romance, is if your adrenal glands are exhausted or tired, you're not going to have the desire to engage in intimate activity or your libido will be really low. 
And a part of what we do in our office is we do something called a symptom survey form. We have various forms that we use in our office, but one of the questions includes lack of desire for intimacy or sexual activity with your mate. If somebody comes in and they have a lot of body signals, they always mark that box when they're exhausted. I know that they're not engaging in sexual activity with their spouse, but the real challenge is their body's exhausted. And what Debbie and I have written to Dr. Bob in Debbie's Guide to Sex and Romance, it's about improving one's health. If we can improve your health, we're going to improve sexual function. <laughs> Dr. Bob, I hope that people are listening out there because one of the things that happens and that we have seen is that people, if they're exhausted, first of all, they don't have good relationship. And second of all, if they're exhausted, their adrenals are affected, they don't want intimacy, they're not happy. And being not happy affects not only the family of the husband and wife, but it affects all those around. And you're not living to your God potential. You have a lot of potential to help people here in this world. Now, Dr. Bob, there has to be something that we can do, though, to help our adrenal glands. So we are living in this stress-filled society. We have um, stuff that's affecting us in hot flashes, female hormones, male hormones, sexual hormones. But what can we do to either prevent or to help us sustain some of this stress that it won't affect our health? Well, you know, Debbie, as you have mentioned, there's so many things you can do. One of them is sleep, get to bed early, so your adrenal glands can heal during the nighttime. Uh, vitamin C in the form of red, yellow, and orange bell peppers versus citrus because when the temperature is really cold, citrus is hard to, to definitely assimilate. On our website, uh, which is drugglessdoctor.com, or you can just do a search on Dr. Bob DeMaria and you'll find me, there are several items that we use. One is an adrenal tissue called AD, that's Alpha Delta B5 Bravo 5. Um, it's an adrenal tissue that helps support the adrenal gland. We also use licorice root. Licorice root is really good to help the adrenal glands support it. We use something in the ADB5 called pantothenic acid. So we have the ability to help support adrenal function. We have a very significant product that we've been using in our practice. Uh, very wonderful. It's called B Vital. B Vital helps increase a person's libido or desire for intimacy. What's very fascinating is because of technology today, we have the ability through saliva testing, which is the free hormone form of testing, to actually do an assessment on your female hormones to see if you do in fact have high or low estrogen. We can also check progesterone, but Deb, when we do female hormone panels on the saliva, and we see high testosterone, I usually see high testosterone in women who have cysts on their ovaries, which is very serious. I also want to, you to know that gentlemen today, we're seeing more and more gentlemen that come into our practice that have low testosterone. They're very passive. They might, a friend might say, hey, let's go hunting, let's go fishing, let's go golfing, let's go out to dinner, let's go ride our bike, let's do something. And if you have a mate or a friend in your life, that says, you know, I think I'm just going to kind of hang out by myself. Their testosterone is being low. They're becoming passive. Debbie, I don't want to say it's an epidemic, but it's in pre-epidemic stages mm -hmm. now. I, when I first started in practice back in 1978, I never thought I'd be talking about men with low testosterone. My concern is, now listen to what I'm going to share with you right now. Soy stops sex. Soy increases estrogen in men, decreases their desire for intimacy. I don't really believe that anybody should use soy, especially young children under 20 years old, because it's going to affect young men's growth and development because the estrogen is antagonistic to testosterone, which would cause a young boy to become more effeminate. The soy products will also increase the estrogen in a woman, a young girl, causing her to have increased secondary sexual characteristics and an increased desire to have intimacy or a ferocious sexual appetite. Men 
once you hit that 25 and 30 years old, that soy product has the potential to impact your prostate gland. You don't want to enlarge prostate gland because of soy. Now Debbie and I travel all over the world. We have spoken and been on TV all over the world. And we recently were on the West Coast taping TV. And one of the people that were part of our life there in the studio came up to me quietly, privately afterwards and was talking to me about his enlarged prostate. His wife makes him eat soy. His wife makes him eat soy because she read about it in a magazine that it was good. Soy stops normal function in human beings. If you're a vegetarian, you know, my accolades to you for whatever reason you're doing that, but we have started to use a pumpkin powder, a pumpkin protein that is also available in our office and on our website. One scoop of it has 10 grams of protein. We also use uh, an egg white based protein and a rice protein. Soy interferes with normal health function in the body. That was a lot, Deb. Well, it is a lot. And I know one of the things that is hard for people is that soy has been really promoted as a health food. And you know, at one time, even ourselves felt that soy was good for you. It was a good, great alternative. But the more studies that we really got into and the more we learned and seeing how people were really affected by soy, we saw that it really was not a good benefit. And I know one of the reasons, too, is that it mo almost all soy here in America are genetically modified. And that's going to be a really big buzz. It's not quite as big in the secular world just to listen, but if you're in the health realm, you hear a lot about genetically modified foods. And soy is one of them. So, Dr. Bob, there is so many things I know we're going to be getting close to the end of the program, how would you summarize talking about the adrenals, talking about men and women hormones? I know that we're going to be having a men's health book come out shortly, and that's exciting because I know a lot of men are saying, what can I do? They're getting on the bandwagon that they want to be healthy too. Well, you know, Deb, um, it comes down to you want to make sure that you're getting adequate sleep. I think another area is minimize some of your commitments. I see this very commonly in females, they're, they're just overcommitted. We're, we, have, we have so many distractions today, especially if you have children, there's so many commitments. So you could be a working mom, you may have aging parents, and your, your job might be in question. I know that some individuals have some financial stresses today for whatever reason. Whatever you can eliminate that is affecting your physiology. If you happen to be a person where bright light bothers your eyes, if you notice you're in constant pain. If you're craving a lot of carbs, you have to have sugar, you have to have comfort food, you're really working on pacifying your adrenal glands. So what I'm going to encourage you to do is to eat whole food, preferably as much organic food that you can. Debbie touched on genetically modified food. You want to eat food that is not genetically modified. You want to eat whole food and you usually look at a label. Um, if the label says number nine it's organic, if it says eight it's genetically modified. You may think about having some testing done that I briefly talked about. Saliva testing is really a wonderful way that we can help determine your exact levels of what you might need to do. And we can also do various blood tests to check out different levels. I think that my concern today is that we're seeing more and more men with this low testosterone and we use a product that it, one of the sources is maca root and I know that's a new term for some of you but the maca root which comes from um, South America and it's one of the companies that we are working with has helped so many men increase their testosterone. There's another herb that we use called tribulus so there are herbs that we can use there are adaptogens that we can use. You really want to talk to someone that has been skilled, that's been trained, that has experience. We help people from all over the world. You may be watching us anywhere in the world right now. You can contact us. We have worldwide clients. If you're someone more in the local area, that's within the three-state area, Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, Pennsylvania, and Kentucky. Yes, we have people that do drive to see us. We have people that fly in to see us. We normally charge $165 for an exam and an x-ray. You're here. Um, we will be happy to do it to you for only $25. Why? Because I'm passionate about making a difference 
in people's lives. We have a, a program in our office every Wednesday at noon, Thursday at 6. It's called the Half Hour of Health. Come on, be a part of our life. We're here to make a difference in your life. It's not hard. It might be a little counterculture, but it definitely can be done. You have to do something different in your life to get a different result. Make that call today. I promise you, you'll be glad you did.